Hi, John with eTrailer. Today we're taking a look at and installing the Demco Stay and Play Duo Supplemental Braking System. Now this has the wireless coach link and it's going on our 2022 Jeep Gladiator. So why do you need a supplemental braking system at all? Well, the law says you need one, first of all. Secondly, it's going to allow uh, your towed vehicle, your RV, when you hit the brakes here, it's going to operate the brakes on the towed vehicle as well. That just uh, is going to be a safer stop, a more stable stop um, than having all of this weight just pushing on the back of your RV. Now one of the reasons that I like this Demco system so much is that it's a proportional system. What does that mean? Well, that means if you slam the brakes on on your RV, it is going to slam the brakes on on your towed vehicle as well. Well, that doesn't happen that much, but if you're going to just do some light braking uh, or just slowing down a little bit, this thing sees that as well. There's an accelerometer that's actually located in the G-Force box that we mounted on the inside of here. Everything that's going on on the Jeep is contained in the Jeep. You don't have to worry about setting up controls or anything else in your RV. Now this is a permanent system, but it's easy to live with. We, everything we mounted is in the driver's side footwell. So as opposed to the portable systems that every time you want to go and tow your vehicle, you have to place this entire system in your car, set it in tow mode, and then when you get to your destination and you want to drive your car, you have to pull it back out. This is always, just stays in your vehicle and it's always ready to go. Now, when you're up in the cab of your RV, you have the wireless coach leak monitor. Now, again, this is just monitoring what's going on back in the Gladiator. When I hit the brakes, it's going to show that the brakes have been applied back on the Gladiator and it's off. This is great for letting you know that you have a normal system that's operating. It's also good to let you know if something's going wrong back there. Now with flat towing, there are five components that you need to be able to flat tow down the road. Of course, you need the base plate. That's going to be the physical connection on your vehicle uh, to allow the hookups that you need. You're going to need a supplemental braking system, whether that's a portable system or a permanently installed system on your towed vehicle. That's going to allow for a safer and legal stopping experience. You're going to need a tow bar. This is going to be the physical connection between your RV and your tow vehicle. Um, you're going to need your tow bar wiring. This is going to transmit all the electrical signals, your turn signals, marker lights, um, all your braking information that you need uh, through this cord. And of course, the last component is going to be the safety cables. In the unlikely event that uh, one of these parts fails, this will keep your towed vehicle safely behind your tow vehicle. So the final thoughts on the Demco here. There is one thing to keep in mind. If your rig has air brakes, uh, Demco makes what they call the Air Force One, and that's the, that's the supplemental braking system that you're gonna wanna use. Ours does not. Ours has hydraulic brakes, so no big deal. This is the Stay and Play Duo is kind of my favorite for these Gladiators. We kind of were able to do a trick mounting up here under the bumper. Everything is nice and contained. It was easy to run the wires up through the engine compartment and back into the cab. It's really uh, just a great system that installs on a great vehicle like the Gladiator. You want to see how we did it? Stick around. First things first, where to start with these auxiliary braking systems? Well, uh, it's a good idea just to get the components out and get them placed first or at least mocked up so that you kind of know what you're working with and what kind of connections you're going to be running. So we can go ahead and start with the main operating unit uh, and I'll show you where I mounted it. So when I was installing the base plate and we already had the bumper off, I went ahead and uh, there's plenty of room behind this front bumper and I went ahead and mounted uh, the main operating unit behind this bumper here. So there wasn't much modification needed uh, to this Demco box to get it up here. Um, I would only had to bend the, the, the tabs on the box, top and bottom, just a little bit. I just put them in a vise and I went ahead and added some stainless steel screws and nuts and bolts on the back just to secure it in here. It is kind of a heavy unit, um, so you want to make sure it's secure. As far as the fittings that are going to be running to it, you're going to have power, you're going to have uh, some electric lines, you're going to have a vacuum line, and you're going to have uh, a smaller nylon line. Uh, and like I said, there's plenty of room under these gladiators. You've got gobs of room to work, um, and when you're finally done, the skid plate goes up and it's all protected. So this unit also has a breakaway switch. I just went ahead, um, we already had the bracket for the uh, six-way plug, and I just went ahead and uh, mounted it right up here to the front bumper, and it's nice and secure. 
The other two main components are going to be the pedal piston. This is going to be for your brake pedal and ties into it um, to actually push your pedal down. And then you have the G-Force controller uh, where you can turn it on and off from this point, And it'll be mounted here on the kick panel. So it's easiest and best to have the G-Force controller on the inside of the footwell there and just run these wires through the firewall. Uh, there is a grommet on these automatic Jeeps um, that you could pop out and drill out the inside and then run the wires through. Uh, you can come back later and seal it up with silicone. And this is the view from the firewall side where they pop out. Uh, and we will be tying these into our diode four-pole wiring here in just a little while. So something you do need to know if you have a Gladiator like this and you're looking at the Demco Duo system, you will need a brake light switch. This is a separate component and you need it. Um, it's going to consist of a bracket and the old style just pin switch basically. So these mount um, pretty easily right now. The setup is going to take a little bit. You've got some set screws and we need to make sure these get set correctly. But mounting it is fairly straightforward. Uh, you're just going to take this center panel here underneath the steering wheel and just pull straight out. Then underneath, you're going to have two 8 millimeter bolts. Those need to come off. Nothing's going to fall or anything. Now, this kit comes in a box, so this is the way that it needs to be set up with the angles here, and like this, and your brake switch. And it's going to attach to the top down here. So just go ahead. We're going to loosely install these eight millimeter bolts right now, and then we can adjust the switch itself. So this is what the brake light switch looks like when it's installed. And this is something that you, uh, that you need to get um, correct here. Uh, it, we had, there's plenty of adjustments left and right. Um, this is something that you don't want the pedal um, too far forward and you want to make sure it comes back all the way to. So as far as electrical connections on the brake light switch, they're both black, both wires are black. One will run to the battery or the fuse panel. I prefer the battery. Um, the other one will run to the operating unit on the black wire. It's going to be the RV uh, sense circuit. Next we're going to go ahead and mount the G-Force unit right about here in the kick panel. We'll be using the supplied self-tapping screws. It just gets screwed into the plastic. It needs to be as level as possible when you do this. So this is where we decided to mount our G-Force controller right here. It seems to be out of the way and still easily accessible to be able to turn it on and off or adjust it. Now when we're setting this cylinder up on this brake pedal arm here, it needs to, there's a few things you need to keep in mind. Um, the anchor point back here um, needs to be pretty straight with a parallel. Uh, this cable needs to be parallel with the cylinder itself. So as the pedal goes down, it needs to be in a straight line. You don't want it to loop or go up or down or left and right. It'll just end up with cable breakage. So we have this anchor point at the back on the firewall. You want to make sure it has supplied um, self-tapping screws. You want to make sure everything's clear on the other side. It's generally this location anywhere around here is is going to be good for you, but always double check before you drill through. Um, as far as that goes, uh, the other connections, um, we have the nylon tube that's going to be hooked up and this runs all the way to the front of the Jeep uh, to the main operating unit that's going to supply the vacuum to actually depress this pedal. Um, and uh, you want to make sure that, that the cylinder is as low as you can possibly be for the mechanical advantage of pushing the pedal down, but you don't want it in the way of your foot. So this seemed to be a pretty good spot for us. Now it mounts to the arm. Uh, this is four uh, three-eighths inch nuts um, and you'll tighten these in a cross pattern just to get this tight and those will essentially lock on to the arm. Okay, so we're back under the Jeep here and the main components are hooked up and we're going to go ahead and connect up our nylon tube and there is a quick connect fitting right above the vacuum line fitting and that's right here. And so we'll just kind of, we are going to use a tubing cutter here. You want to leave a little room 
um, just doing this in advance so that I know it's going to run with this line. We'll go ahead and cut right here with the tubing cutter. You can use a razor blade um, on this nylon tubing too. You don't need a tubing cutter. You just want to make sure the edges are, are clean and you don't cut at an angle. And then this will simply push in to this quick connect fitting. And you'll feel it kind of click in. And if you ever need to pull it out, just push down on the collar and pull the tube. So as far as uh, electrical fittings under here, we have the breakaway switch. And we just went ahead and ran it up and tied it directly into this operating system here. The only wires that are running from here up to the engine compartment are the red and the black wires. And these tie into the G-Force controller. We'll show you that in a minute. Um, the other wire is going to be the power wire. And I went ahead and ran this on the gladiators that are on the, the batteries on the passenger side. So we ran a single power line up to the battery. And we'll show you that when we get up on top. So the red and black wire that came in from the main operating unit up on the front bumper, those two red, those two wires I ran up into the engine compartment, basically just over this driver's side fender well. And they met up with the G-Force controller that I ran through the firewall right here. Now here in this shot, this red and black wire is coming from the G-Force controller uh, that we ran through the firewall. I just go ahead and went ahead and ran it down. And these lines, the red and black lines, are from the front bumper main operating unit. As you can see, went ahead and had these heat shrinked and butt connected and ran down. This is also our diode wiring for the braking system that we tie into here. The G-Force controller also has the yellow and green wires that come out. And these will come down and they meet up with the diode wiring that runs all the way to the back of our Jeep here. And so this is all one big connection that I made here. Um, it's just a convenient spot to tie everything in. And then we have a big hole in the frame. And when we go to clean this up and go ahead and, and, and put all of the loom and everything, it simply will just tuck in here out of the way. So you can see the G-Force controller is mounted to the kick panel and just directly above it is the wireless coach link. That actually will talk to the unit that we plug in to the tow vehicle itself. Now the coach link hookup is actually pretty easy. Um, it only has two wires and what we're going to be attaching those two wires to, one wire, uh, if you remember our brake light switch here that we installed. On the brake light switch we have one wire that's going to be uh, power and then the other wire that's not power that's what the coach link connects to and then the other lead for the coach link the white wire uh, will just connect to the vehicle ground so speaking of the brake light switch um, that switch needs power and the power line i went ahead and ran um, along the firewall up here it actually disappears and then just drops down and into through the firewall into the driver's side footwell um, I just ran it down around here, and it's actually going to pop up right here. Um, and then this other line, and both of these are supplied in the kit, these fusible links. Uh, the other one is the main power for our front operating system on the front bumper. And that one just kind of ran down to the front and then through um, our front grill down here into the main operating unit. Pretty much the last connection that we have to show you is going to be uh, the vacuum line routing. Now, the kit comes with 3 8 inch tubing that you're going to be using to tie into the vehicle vacuum system. Now, it includes uh, the T-fitting, it includes um, hose clamps, and everything you need to tie into it. This system is powered by vacuum. Remember, the front operating system has a vacuum pump in it, and so the factory vacuum line is this soft line down here. Originally it just ran directly into this. So we went ahead and cut the factory line and installed the check valve that comes with the kit and we came up through the bottom and the T that is supplied with the kit we went ahead and ran. This is the line coming from the main operating unit. This is the line that's actually going to your brake booster. Now one thing to note with the check valve, the black 
There's uh, two colors on this, obviously. The clear is going to go towards your brake booster. The black is going to go towards the engine or towards the vacuum source. And that's going to be our engine. So in this instance, we have it facing down because this is the factory line. Also, one more thing that I wanted to point out, uh, it was this ground stud here. This is a factory ground stud. And uh, this is a great location to ground all of your components. Literally every component, the G-Force connector, the main operating unit, everything is grounded right here. It was such a convenient spot. Uh, there was plenty of wire to run stuff. Now with everything connected, we want to go ahead and test the system. And one way to do that is actually to pull the breakaway pin. Now make sure that the on-off switch on the G-Force controller is switched to on. And when we pull the pin on the breakaway switch, the system should activate and depress the brake pedal. Now, just a quick note, when we're testing the system, this is also a good time to watch the slack in the cable and to make sure that you have your cylinder lined up with the firewall so that it's, it's as straight as the cable can be. This is the time that once it pulls the brake pedal down, this is when the cable could either stretch or come loose. So make sure to double check your connections. So as far as the install goes, once everything is tested and connected, this kit comes with plenty of wire looms. So you could just go ahead and go through, zip tie everything, tighten it up, make it pretty under the hood. And that was a look at the Demco Stay and Play Duo supplemental braking system with the wireless coach link on a 2022 Jeep Gladiator.